So you went there to, to learn how to die? Or exactly. What? Yes, I went there. That's good. Let me just interject. You know what, folks? We plan our trips to Europe. We're going to plan our trips here and there. We don't plan the inevitable trip. We're all going to have the, of passing into the next dimension and leaving this earth walk. And it seems like people really want to avoid that inevitable journey into the sacred journey of death, which is... As far as God is concerned, there is no such thing as death. It's we're eternal spirit. And in fact, that, that's the interesting thing that we're together because we had lunch earlier and we recognized each other from Egypt. We all sort of have a past life together and history together where we lived like, I would say, how many? Five, ten thousand years ago? But how long ago? In Egypt. Uh, we've had many lifetimes together. But that one connection yes. that we felt uh, the three of us. Five thousand. Ten thousand BC. Five thousand BC. According to the, to the history. Thousands of years before Christ. From an esoteric point of view, it's really older than that. Yeah. Yeah. And the exciting thing is that Egypt and Mexico both built pyramids and they have much uh, similarity with uh, connection with outer space, extraterrestrials, and the uh, Mayan calendar, which is coming to an end in 2012. And, um, not that the world is coming to an end, but the third dimension is like collapsing. We're, we're becoming enlightened and connected now. The thing about Inkhotep is that he is related to a, a very famous uh, pyramid in Egypt that is considered like the oldest pyramid. Saqqara. That is the, the pyramid of Saqqara. And Inkhotep and Saqqara are the same thing. They, you talk about Saqqara, you need to talk about him that. So, the pyramid of, of Saqqara is resembled a lot the pyramids of Mesoamerica. Correct. Because it's a, it's a pyramid that goes with steps. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not a, like a wall, like an, an angle like that. Mm -hmm. It's actually like little steps. It's the same thing that you find in El Castillo and Chichen Itza. Wow. I went to Chichen Itza, and then when the, when the spring equinox happens, that they call the snake, it crawls up, you see the shadow of the sun, and it just perfectly aligns so that the, the, the picture of the snake, and it has a lot of uh, statues of re reptilians, too, and, uh, and lizard gods and stuff, and evidently we are connected to the Anunnaki, which is a uh, extraterrestrial, we're like biogenetic experiments on this planet. <laughs> tradition instead of using the chemical part we use the consciousness the consciousness that is there so our training is different so what we use for example I have the seeds of, of cohova that is uh, very common in, in, in the Antilles cohova is an hallucinogenic and uh, we talk to the elemental through the deva that is the region the king of this element yes like uh, let me just interject that every region of, um, of the world has like what they call a diva which is sort of like an overlooking god a patron a spiritual energy that's sort of the protector of this area uh -huh. you know each region has its own language dialect customs vibrations every valley every mountain has a sort of like a an overseer in the higher dimensions what would you say fourth fifth sixth dimension what dimension is that a diva or maybe eighth, ninth dimension. It's from a yeah. David dimension of its own. That's between. It's interdimensional. It's between dimensions. It's not like this. And uh, I was born in the, <coughs> the the month of Kaban, the day of Kaban. And Kaban is related to Earth. And Earth, there, there are some uh, elementals that are related to to Earth, uh, like the the dwarf, or the, or the dwarves, and, uh, and and the and goblins. Exactly. And people. Yeah. Trolls, fairies, pixies, yeah, yeah. nature spirits. And also the crystals. I just came back from Scotland and Findhorn. They're famous because it was a community up in northern Scotland that along the seashore in a very, <laughs> very barren area with the sea and the sand, salt water. But these ladies are like witches, you know, Wiccans, and they talk to the cabbages and the plants. Suddenly they're growing them really big. And they, they got into communicating and listening to the flowers, listening to the trees, and hearing what the spirit of the plants had to say. 
and feeding them what they wanted, and there began a dialogue. And now Finhord Foundation is a great big alternative lifestyle foundation in northern Scotland that has talked about, you know, uh, alternative healing and, and eco-friendly living environment and structures and working with much as natural, recycled water, solar paneling, everything that's logical, and working with the earth. And this is uh, just one example of many where, where botanists and, and the realm of science has crossed over to the world of psychic sciences and the spirituality of the communication that the earth and the plants have that are available to us if we listen. But the native people know that. That's why we respect the Native American traditional ways and the ancient Mayans and the, the, the indigenous people throughout the world, not only in America, but Africa, Egypt, Europe, wherever. The native people are very connected. In ancient Egypt, we, we very much use um, sound as a very powerful uh, form of healing. And I do something called advanced sound wave energy therapy, which is inaudible sound. So in, uh, yeah, obviously you use mushrooms in your work, uh, in my own work. Um, but uh, do, do you have any place for inaudible sound or sounds that are not actually made, uh, but the energy of sound uh, as important uh, in healing and uh, transcendence? Yes. Sound actually, sound creates, and the Mayas know that even today. Uh, if you go, for example, to Chichen Itza, and, and you go to the, the temple, El, El Castillo, the Pyramid El Castillo, and you stop on the front of the, of the great uh, La Escalera. So we have Stairway the, of the okay, great castle. Okay. And you do like this, clap, and you're going to hear that like five or seven times. Or oh, an echo. The echo. Reverberate. Yeah. Also, if you do that same thing with a voice of a couple of friends together, the sound is going to vibrate. With you. So imagine that with 100 people doing the same thing right there. Yeah. So the <coughs> vibrations and are going to create something. Actually, taught all, uh, taught us that uh, when you say something, you are creating something in the universe by vibration. God said the word. And Exactly. Yeah, the Bible. Yeah, let's do it some moments. In Genesis, the Bible begin. The Bible it says, "In the beginning was the sound." Right? Yeah. Begin was the word. That's the first opening that's sentence. So yeah, the word is it's sound it's is like. Yeah, when, when you go to Genesis, the, the, it says, "And God said, Let there be light." Yeah. And we say, yeah, "Well, light was first." No. No. Let there God, be sound. Actually. He said, "And God said." God said, said let, let there be let light. There be light. So light. there was sound before that. Correct. <laughs> so what would be your equivalent of Om in, uh, in the Mayan uh, tradition? Omen? Om. 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 We have Om, the primordial sound of the universe in our Sanskrit Vedic texts. They have the, the Om too in the Mayas. So you have the same. The, the A, 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 and the Om, both yes. the male A, A. and the female version? Yes, and the A. Wait a second, excuse me. There's two, there's two versions of Om and Vedas. Yeah. There's male and female. Yeah. What are they? Om, O-M, and R-O-R. Om is more feminine. That's feminine. Om is masculine. So what about in Maya? They have the Aum. Aum. Feminine. Aum. And then you know what And you know what everyone says, too, when they burn themselves or hurt themselves? They say, ouch, ouch. They're calling the gods, like, help, out. You know, they said, ow, it hurts me. And so like, when they're really, so they're calling to that universal sound to, to ease the pain. Or when you're sick, you know, ow, oh, ow, oh, your, your stomach is sick. You go, ow, oh, ow, oh, you're groaning. You're calling to God. You're going, oh, but you're just doing it because you're you're calling for that healing energy. And then I'm thinking of the native too, the, the Indians, you know, changing around the fire. <laughs> and they're just wailing. And at first when I... That's first, the shamanic ways. Yeah. You, you go into trance states through using sound. The first that's time, how the, the medicine man and woman heals. The first time I interviewed an Indian chief about that and he was doing some chants, I said, oh great, could you translate that for me? What in your language? He's just... What? That's the universal cry. It's a baby. It's the wailing. It's the little, we're all children of God. And just the wailing coming from him. It's just something like a baby going, crying. But that's all it is. It's the wailing, the, the sound coming out of you, which is healing your frequency. History. So is, is God in a, in a place or a stage that we don't, we cannot get it. We call it in Spanish, a nominado. The one have no name, mm -hmm. So in order to understand God, he have to, to manifest uh, itself 
as a duality, father and mother, and a son, that is the Christ. In the case of the Mayas, Itzamna was the father, the first manifestation of the Unakur. Uh, uh, Ichel was the mother, and Kinichahau was the son, that is the Christ. Remember, the mother is fire, and uh, like Kundalini. We say the same in India. Yeah. The, the mouth of the, we feed the fire because we're feeding the mouth of the goddess. Okay. So the, the, the mother is the, the fire, and the fire produce the light, that is the sun. So the, 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 the produce of the, of the fire is light, and that light is, is the, the sun, is the sun. Is the father. Okay, yeah. so if we have a, a mother with fire, there is the product of that fire is light, that is the sun, and with that light, that is the sun, that is Christ, Kinichahau, uh, Quetzalcoatl, or Kukulkan, you are going to look for your father. Remember that we are living in darkness. <coughs> this is darkness. We are surrounded by darkness. Or is this in the Vedas, Maya illusion? Okay, so exactly, exactly. This is so all just a fantasy. It's an so illusion. It's a so dream. Or as Eli Crystal said, this is a hologram. We are living in a dream. <laughs> yeah. So it is a holographic reality. So absolutely. But it is real. I mean, uh, if you cut yourself, you bleed. It hurts. I mean, this is the reality of our physical dimension. There is reality, reality. we're experiencing, but we're experiencing it in third dimensional reality, but we reality, are convinced of that. You but real reality, we're, hot, we're all multi-dimensional. You have absolute reality and relative reality. In relative reality, when you cut yourself, you have an absolute reality. Nobody's born, nobody dies, nobody came, nobody went. There is just the divine silence, the mystery, void. Okay, the the, the, there is a very beautiful teaching of, of Yeshua ben Pandira that is, uh, is commonly known as Jesus. And he says that uh, we have to look for the Father that is hidden inside of us. So uh, the, uh, the only way to do that is by using the light of the Christ, like a lamp, lantern, not in Perna. Yeah. And you're going to do like this, and you're going to start to look for the Father that is inside of you. So you're going to travel all your life looking for yourself. That's an inner uh, trip, an inner voyage. So one day you're going to see that little uh, silhouette. You're going to get near and near. And when you finally see the Father with the light of the Christ that comes from the fire of the Divine Mother, what you're going to see is yourself. And ultimately, when you see yourself, if you don't see yourself at all that is, in every storm, in every dimension, in every planet, then. Uh, you haven't seen it all. You haven't seen the whole of yourself. Exactly. Because we are all that is. The Maya says, I understand the theory. I mean, sometimes I have moments, with Zen moments. <laughs> but the, the Maya says, uh, uh, in Lakesh. In Lakesh. And that means, I am another you. So you every other person you see yourself. See, when you, uh, you say hello, that's in Lakesh. Do in in Lakesh. Lakesh. And, and this is incredible that they, they do like this. And we do the master, God and me, back to the God and me. And I saw them, the, the Maya, right there. And then you think that this is not India, this like is Mexico, Mexico yeah. my God. And they do like this, yes, and they do like this, and they do like this. Like, yeah. Okay. And, and, and this we do in Egypt also. And we, these are mudras. Yeah. These are mudras that we do even in, uh, in Buddhism. We have these mudras or these meditation and so on. And, and, and I know that for sure you remember the Buddha that is like this. That's right. Well, yeah. we have that in the Mayas yeah. too. And also a Mother Mary and, and a Mozart, yes. And many and the Catholic uh, patron saints, you often have the uh, the uh, the saints and the icons like this. Yeah. Yeah. You can go see it through this way and we get out here. All saints have this. Yeah. Energy. Bringing exactly. energy and transmitting out. So we do this in Reiki as well. Right now you can, do, you can go to uh, Guatemala or South of Mexico and you're going to find these images like this. And it's like being in China or in India. You know, it's the Buddha right there. So next time you're in a circle with friends or family, instead of holding hands, just hold energy. Yeah, you can just transmit energy. I didn't right. even touch you when we were doing it. <laughs> yeah, but you're like you're holding this way. You put your left hand up and your right hand down. Coming back to linear time and space, um, 
How are we doing in, in, in linear, in the real, okay. linear reality? Okay, we're, we're, we're coming up to the end, let's sign off with him with an ohm, shall we? And I invite you at home to also chat with us an ohm. Well, thank you very much for yeah. being here with us. Thank you, Jose. And sharing your enlightenment. Jose Tomas, and, uh, Frank Craven, and, and, and Rashmi Kilnani. Thank you. So, Rashmi, why don't you lead us in the norms? So everybody just um, ground yourself and surround yourself with light and chant Om, connecting heaven and earth through your chakras. Om. tube which connects all our chakras in a straight line. Breathe in deep. And now feel heaven and earth connecting into your heart through the chakras with a primordial warm sound. appreciate you tuning in every week, 9.30 at Channel 34. That we have a right and duty to ask and answer what's ailing you in America because the government is ours. This, the, the officials and politicians are our employees. And if we don't criticize and bring them to task, and then, they, they, then we live in a dictatorship instead of a democracy. Los ancestros están empezando a despertar hoy día y tenemos que hacernos conscientes de eso para poder aprovechar este momento en la historia. La Divina Madre ha tomado muchas molestias para que en esta época nosotros podamos despertar la conciencia. Y eso se hace a través de muchas cosas que ella hizo en el pasado para que nosotros ahora nos podamos beneficiar de eso. El arte que vemos en libros y en museos nos está ayudando a poder despertar. Pero no lo vamos a poder hacer consciente a menos que nosotros no hagamos un esfuerzo para nosotros poder recobrar esa conciencia. Los ancestros están despertando y están dentro de nosotros. Ese es el propósito de mi mensaje. Así que yo quiero que, que sepan esto y cuál es el mensaje de los cráneos de cristal. Gracias. What's the story behind skulls? Crystal skulls. Okay, this is a fluoride skull. Uh, this is a recent name. Uh, but the importance is that uh, it doesn't matter if it's an, it's an an old skull 400 years ago or maybe five years ago. The importance is that in the skull you're going to have two things together in one thing, in one artifact. And it's the sacred nature of the crystal and the sacred geometry in the design of the skull. So the human skull have a very sacred design related to sacred geometry. 
So the proportions and the angles of the eyes and the nose, the mouth, the ears, the shape of the skull is very, very safe. <laughs> When you do the, the eye, uh, you're going to feel the vibration. Uh, and when you do the mm, you're going to feel it very When you do the s, stop. S, okay. S, stop. So when you do the um, s, stop. So that is one of the ways of using the score, and you did it naturally. That's very nice. And this is sort of like a, a, a tool to communicate with the yes. the extra dimensional beings, the uh, the other dimensions within ourselves or other s extraterrestrials or what? Uh, to many, many things, especially the main purpose of this is to put you in contact with yourself mm -hmm. before you put you in contact with other things. Your higher self. Yeah, your higher self. Okay. That is the importance of the parts. The quartz is made of the nature of the Divine Mother and in the nature of the Divine Father. Remember, that is the memory of the planet is made of quartz. Oh, uh, really? Yes, the, the memory. The quartz crystal yeah. has yeah. the memory of, it's like, uh, yeah, they say like uh, Dr. Emoto, messages of water, that you can put uh, different energy or prayers around it. The water, the molecules change their shape. Yeah. So same with like quartz crystals, which are like, pure stone, but they're, so they're invisible because they're like clear, they're like diamonds. Yeah. Why? So, so their molecular structure is very sensitive, and so crystals can be programmed with our thoughts and, yeah. and given certain energy. They, they call quartz a solid liquid also, and it's also called the semen of the gods. Semen of the gods. Also like a liquid, liquid light made, made solid. Exactly. So it's information, it's and that's why we use uh, quartz in uh, Computers, is that correct? Yes, yes. And it's androgynous in, in nature, but also can be manifested as a feminine energy because it's the Divine Mother. The Divine Mother is uh, what we say in Spanish, la patrona de los cráneos de cristal. She's the, the patron saint patron oh, the of the crystal skulls. Yeah. So uh, one thing that is very important about the crystal skulls is, th is that Crystal skulls are very strong, very strong. So it's not like working with quartz uh, in the shape of a rock without any, any form in particular. The thing is that when you're using crystal skulls, you have to make, be sure that you're going to use it for higher purposes. So never use a crystal skull to, for things like the, the lotto, <laughs> Or to find a job, or to do things. No, no. But finding a job, a survival, is not. Let's say you want to get a job, if you want. But there are some people who can do that. The thing is that they are going. Maybe they are going to have what they ask, but the way is going to be very, very tough. So this is a. How do we point it? Like a crystal has a point, and you sort of have the direction. Would this be the direction of the energy? Yes. Where it faces. Yes. So this was carved by man. Now, as I understand, you said in Tibet too, and out in the mountains of Nepal and everything, they also have crystal skulls. Yes, yes. And in Brazil, and of course in Mexico. Can what? you use the crystal skulls for healing specifically? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if someone had cancer, for example, how would you use a, a skull? For it's the same thing that you do with with Reiki and any other discipline. The only thing is that the skull is going to help you to amplify the energy yes. by the nature of the crystal and through the sacred of the geometry of the skull. So okay. you're going to have a double. So you don't want to amplify cancer energy, for example. But you want to pull it out. So you, yeah. would, you would amplify the energy of light going of, through the of cancer. Healing. Of healing. <laughs> to use the, the imagination, but the imagination from the point of view of esotericism that is different from fantasy. In the case of imagination, you're going to see an hologram, hologram image of the skull going inside your skull. That is the first step, and you're going to do that while you're doing mantra. Like a meditation. Yes, like a meditation. A deep trance state. And I'm going to give you the, <coughs> the sacred mantra. 
right now to do this. Okay. The same okay. thing in Spanish, the same thing in English. The mantra is cranio, but in English is cranium. So in cranio, we are going to do a -e -o, a -e -o. Okay? In English, you are going to do a you're going to do that mantra where the, the skull is going to be one with your skull. You're going to see that image going inside of you. That is the first step. The main topic of everything I write and all my lectures are related to the ancestors. The ancestors are returning today, but we are not aware of that. So we need to be aware who the ancestors are, and the ancestors are here between us. We have to understand that the ancestors are us. So we can relate this topic about the ancestors to any tradition around the world. I relate this to the Mayas and to the Taino Indians of Puerto Rico, Cuba, and the Dominican Republic. But you can do the same thing with any other part of the world. So they are here, they are walking on the streets, but they are closer than you think. Because they when they hit the planet, we're going to find more uh, telepathy, more awareness, more awakened love, and all this idea of war, and everything will be ridiculous. And what we'll be fighting for, what we, why should we kill each other? It'll be really obvious that we're all brothers and sisters. Our brothers and sisters in Iraq and Afghanistan are not our enemy. There are no enemies. It's just a, a you know, construct. Even religion is collapsing. Religion's a byproduct of political control. You know, only the rabbi or the priest or, you know, the high minister knows, can interpret the Bible or the Holy Word. No, no. We are the interpretation. We are the living light of Christ. Christ taught on the desert, on the mountain, wherever. He didn't go to synagogue to teach. He taught, gather in the name of love, and then you'll find grace and enlightenment. And so it's up to us to find our own connection with the higher self, and we all can have it. It's totally available to us, right? Yes. And uh, talking about the ancestors, uh, the way to know this is uh, it started with understanding that uh, the ancestors are inside of us, but we need to be aware of that. We need to be able to do that uh, in a conscious way. So the first thing that we started to experience with this awakening of the ancestors inside of us is through art. When you go to a museum or you see uh, pictures or you read a book, you're going to start to feel something that is telling you that that is related to you. <laughs> 